Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sabbath day and thank you for being with us all through the morning. We are praying for your presence. You are praying for your guidance. And above all, Lord, we are praying for the masses to be with us as we learn your word. And so thank you for giving us such a chance to learn of thee. Cleanse thou us our iniquities and Lord, Anoint our lips that we may speak only what heaven approves. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm glad that uh, God can uh, give us another opportunity to be able to listen to his word and know what uh, he's speaking to his church at uh, at such a time as this. This is uh, part one of uh, the series, The Three Angels' Messages of Revelation chapter 14. This is part one of the 10 part series and uh, it will be running through the week. And so uh, I pray that uh, the Lord will give us time to be able to listen to his word and be able to direct our minds to heavenly things. And uh, I found it uh, more appropriate to speak about uh, Revelation chapter 14 and uh, the three angels' messages. But uh, before we can go deeply into the three angels messages themselves we need to know why has god given us the three angels messages this is the most important thing to know why god has given us the messages when uh, you look uh, at the bible before some great event you will find that uh, god has to prepare his people before that event happens and so the messages uh, of revelation chapter 14 although unique the message may be it is not only at this moment that it's so unique but uh, we have had messages in different times before the flood came upon the earth in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 6, let us look there. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, before the flood came on the earth, the Lord had to send a warning to the people. And in Genesis chapter 6, we read, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, verses three, so important to know why actually the Lord had to send a message to these people. And the Lord said that my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. So because iniquity had uh, prevailed and had taken hold of the inhabitants of the earth, the Lord saw it fit to send a message to these people to prepare the way because the world was going to be destroyed by the flood that is the destruction of the antediluvian also in the destruction of uh, the cities of sodom and gomorrah in genesis chapter 19 
we find that uh, the Lord did not just come and destroy the earth and take the righteous or deliver the righteous from what was happening, but the Lord had to send. In fact, we are told that uh, the man Lord was a messenger of righteousness. When uh, just uh, when you peruse through the Bible in the book of uh, uh, First Peter, if I'm not wrong, the book of First Peter, chapter. Uh, to be the book of First uh, Peter. Kinda lost a little bit, but uh, let us see. Second Peter, chapter two, not First Peter. When you look at the book of Second Peter chapter 2, from verse uh, 4, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but he cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved not the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. That is... Genesis chapter 6, and then in turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an ensemble unto those that after should live ungodly, and deliver just Lord vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And so the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah had reached the climax of iniquity. And uh, the preach of righteousness, the just man, Lord, preached in that city and his spirit was vexed. But God did not just uh, leave them like that. He even sent the two angels to the city to tell them that uh, destruction is going to follow. And so we find that at the peak of the darkness of this world, the Lord sends a people a message so that they may not be left in darkness or destruction may not come upon them when uh, uh, they do not know, but they are given a chance to be able to repent so that uh, when judgment is uh, uh, given to the world, the people have been warned of uh, the coming destruction. Now that is uh, in the days of Lord, that is, uh, that is the days of Noah, that is in the days of Lord. But also on special uh, events and special occasions, the Lord has been able to send his messengers to the world to warn them of uh, what is coming to happen. When you look at uh, the book of, uh, the book of First Kings, uh, Israel was uh, so much in idolatry and the Lord wanted to bring a judgment to that nation before they went into captivity. And so he sent a message to the nation of Israel, which was joined to Balaam. What was happening in the nation of Israel, the book of First Kings, chapter 16, verses 29. And in the 38th and eighth year of Asa king of Judah began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria 20 and two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. I'm reading from 1 Kings chapter 16, I'm in verse 30. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, that is the oath of rebellion, that is Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to a wife Jezebel, 
the daughter of Ithabel, king of Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him, and reared up an altar for Baal in the house of and reared up the altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. 33 And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his day did Hael the Bethelite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in the youngest son, Zegu, according for the word of the Lord which he spake by Joshua the son of Nun, and that is the story in Joshua chapter 6, verses 26. And so it is said that uh, after Ahab had married uh, Jezebel, he started Baalim in the nation of Israel and set up Baal in Samaria and built an altar to it. And uh, it is historian says that uh, uh, without uh, any delay, God sent Elijah to meet Ahab and they met in the funeral of the youngest son of uh, Hiel, the Bethelite who had built the gates of Jericho at the cost of the firstborn and at the cost of the lastborn he laid it. And so in this funeral they met Elijah and uh, Ahab, Elijah coming and Ahab coming to console Hiel for the laws of his sons. Chapter 17, verse 1, And Elijah the Tishabite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto her, As the Lord of God Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And so after Elijah reminding Ahab of God, who had said that whoever lays the gates shall lose his son firstborn at the laying of it the lastborn shall also die and the word had been fulfilled so also he was standing in his presence to tell him as far as the worship of the true god is concerned in israel there shall never be dew or rain until things are uh, made up and so you find that whenever the lord wants to do a special thing in a nation or in the world there must be a person who is to be sent as a messenger to see if these things be so and warn the inhabitants of the world. Remember also the city of Nineveh and uh, the call of Jonah to go to that city and tell them that uh, it will be destroyed, that the sins of the people had reached its peak and the Lord was going to act. The Lord also sent Jonah to warn these cities. Now, before the coming of Jesus Christ, the first coming of Jesus Christ, this is what we read in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 40. The book of Isaiah chapter 40. The Lord will never leave his people without a person to tell them what is about to happen in this world. And as we are going through this, the messages of Revelation chapter 14, the three angels messages, I want us to be keen to what the Lord is telling us because we are the people now who are being called to stand in the gap. The, 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 the book of Isaiah chapter 40. This is what we read from verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And so the message is to comfort Israel. She has been in her sin, but she has to be comforted because the Lord is about to save her. Verse 3, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And the voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all the goodness thereof is as the flower of the field. 
The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it, surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Now, the quotation in uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, which is a prophecy, points to the first coming of Jesus Christ. And you can find it in Matthew chapter 3, Mark chapter 1, Luke chapter 3, where actually John the Baptist is the voice in the wilderness to prepare a way. And he is the voice of Elijah. And we are told that, behold, before the coming of the Lord, I'll send the prophet Elijah. And so the voice of John crying in the wilderness to prepare the way, Jesus likened it unto the voice of Elijah. But that was in the first coming of Jesus Christ. In the second coming of Jesus Christ, we read this in the book of Malachi chapter 4. I hope you are following. Why the three angels' messages? God has to have a witness in this world. The book of Malachi chapter 4, it says, verses 1, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud year, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave ne them neither root or nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stored. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. But before that day re reaches, verse 4, Malachi chapter 4, verse 4, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I'll send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This sending of Elijah, what was Elijah to do? Uh, the book of First Kings chapter 18, go back to the book of First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 37. First Kings 37, it says, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. So the work of Elijah was to turn the hearts of the people back to God. This was the message of Elijah. And before the dreadful uh, coming of the day of the Lord, he sends Elijah to bring the hearts of the people back to God once again. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Why the three angels' messages? This is the question that we are trying to solve. After all the messages have been preached, why do we have the three angels' messages? This is the part one in a series of 10 on Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. The presentation is why the three angels' messages. Ezekiel chapter 33, it says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their costs and set him for their watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in the iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. 
And so the reason why the Lord sends the three angels' messages is to set the watchmen at the walls of Zion so that they may blow a trumpet because the law has been transgressed. They must blow a trumpet, Isaiah chapter 58. The book of Isaiah chapter 58, we are reminding ourselves why the three angels' messages. Isaiah chapter 58. And the word of the Lord says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. And so the work of the watchman in, uh, Isaiah, in uh, Ezekiel is to blow the trumpet, and the trumpet should be able to show people their sins so that they may be able to repent and be reconciled unto the Lord before the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord. And uh, going on some two chapters to Isaiah chapter 60, talking about why the three angels' messages and the blowing of the trumpet, Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. And so the work <coughs> of the trumpet and the three angels' messages is to lighten up the world with the glory of the Lord. The book of Joel, why the three angels' messages? We are going through these familiar verses as we build the foundation of the three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14. And I, I'm praying that the Lord will do something, will sanctify us and make us watchmen to understand our duty and our obligation. Our people call for a, such a time as this. The book of Joel. The book of Joel. Uh, chapter two, speaking about the day of the Lord. Joel chapter two, verses 12. Therefore also now said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. A question is asked in verse 11, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executes his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide in it. Then in verse 12, he says that therefore also now said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him even a meat offering and drink offering unto the Lord your God. Now, I wouldn't go into drink offerings because these were libations that were offered as the blood of the people to show that uh, uh, they are a sinful people and they depended upon the blood of Jesus Christ to be cleansed. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Isaiah chapter 58, sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly. Remember Ezekiel chapter 33 that the watchman has to blow a trumpet. Verse 16, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of his closet. Uh, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? And so the work of the watchmen in blowing the trumpet was to prepare a people for the great events that were to happen. And that is why the Lord says that he has set us as watchmen in the land. I go back to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel. And uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, 
the reason why the three angels messages are given is because the world is full of iniquity and before it is given the lord appoints his messengers his watchmen so that to bring a message to the people to prepare them for the great event that are going to happen ezekiel chapter 34. this is verse one going onwards and the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man prophesy against the shepherds of israel prophesy and say unto them thus the lord god and the shepherds who be the shepherds of israel that do feed themselves should not the shepherds feed the flocks the reason why the three angels messages are sent is so that the shepherds may feed the flock verse 3 you eat the fat and ye clothe ye with the wool ye kill them that are fed but ye feed not the flock the deceased have ye not strengthened neither have ye healed that which was sick neither have you bound up that which was broken neither have you brought again that which was driven away neither have you sought that which was lost but with force and with cruelty have you ruled them and they were scattered because there is no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered verse 6 my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill here my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them and none did seek after them verse 7 therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the lord now this is very critical this is very issue serious issues that the shepherds have now to listen to the voice of the lord he says as I live, said the Lord, surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherd fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, all ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I am against the shepherd, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock, neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'll even I will both search my sheep and seek them out, as the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in the cloud in the day. And I'll bring them out from the people and gather them from their countries and I'll bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all inhabited places of the country. And I will feed them in good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fall be. They shall be they lie in a good fall and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains uh, of Israel. And then he says that uh, he will say pastors upon the flock will be able to feed the sheep verses 22 therefore will i save my flock and they shall no more be a prey and i'll judge between cattle and cattle and i'll set up one shepherd over them and shall feed them even my servant david he shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd and i the lord will be their god and my servant david a prince among them i the lord have spoken it and so before the lord comes he has to seek his flock from where they are and set the shepherds upon them so that they may be fed meat in due season and we understand from the early writing page 63 paragraph 2 that the messengers of the lord should be watching where any kind of fanaticism may arise from and there are many truths contained in the word of the Lord, but what the flock need is present truth. And the sanctuary message that in 300 days is able, is designed to tell us where we are in stream of time and uh, uh, strengthen the weak and the enfeebled and help the people stand in the day of the Lord. And so the reason why God gives the three angels messages is to prepare the flock to be able to stand in his day. The book of uh, Malachi chapter 3. The book of Malachi chapter 3 verses 1. This is what we read. 
Malachi chapter 3, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way for me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom he delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of the host. Now, Malachi chapter 3 applies to 1844, for those who have read it, the messenger of the Lord, the Lord came in his sanctuary suddenly to begin the day of atonement when people were not expecting it. They thought that the Lord will come to the earth. But when he entered into the most holy place, he had sent his messengers to prepare them to sound the trumpet from 1833 until 1843, the feast of the trumpets, which were to last for 10 days, had lasted for 10 years. Verse 2, it says, after the Lord entering into his temple suddenly, what was the work for him to do in the most holy place? Verse 2, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth, for is like our finest fire, and like a fullest soap. So when he goes into the most holy place, he has to do a work of purification. And the messengers have to sound the message so that the people may be prepared. Verse 3, and he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. The sons of the Levi were the ones who were to feed the flock with meat in due season, and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and in former years. And I'll come near you to judgment. I'll be swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from the right. And fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not therefore, ye sons of Jacob, ye are not consumed. The work of the three angels' messages is to prepare a people in the most holy place to stand without a mediator, but to stand with a protector. Look at the book of uh, Habakkuk, the small book of Habakkuk. And uh, I'm looking at uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verses 1 to 4. We are told, I'll stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Remember the work of the watchman in the book of Joel, the book of Isaiah, and the book of Ezekiel. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And so this message, the three angels' messages that are given, are again to prepare a people to accept justification by faith, to know that on their own accord they cannot be accepted before the Lord, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ they can be accepted. And so, chapter 3 of Habakkuk, he continues from verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon the Shigionoth, O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. And this is a wind instrument. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Now you understand that after the three angels' messages have been sounded, what follows is the seven last plagues, and they are poured without a mixture of mercy in it. Verse 3, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Peran, his glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. Revelation chapter 18. There is that angel that is coming from the heaven, and it fills all the heaven with the glory of God. And this is the fourth angel's message. This is a combination of all the three angels' messages. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was hiding 
of his power. And so the Lord with all his powers and with all the full force of the Holy Spirit will come down according to Revelation chapter 18 and Acts chapter 3 when the three angels' messages are being given so that the people may be able to gain the righteousness of Jesus Christ and be able to stand in the day of the Lord. So the three angels' messages are given to prepare a people. But now this is interesting. Let us look at a few points in the spirit of prophecy, what the Lord speaks to his people. In 4SP, this is 4SP 199, paragraph 2. Jesus sends his people a message of warning to prepare them for his coming. To the prophet John was made known the closing work in the great plan of man's redemption. He beheld an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. This is the final warning unto every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Spirit of Prophecy, volume four, page 199, paragraph two, and 199 paragraph 3. Now read carefully what it says. The angel presented in prophecy as delivering this message symbolizes a class of faithful men. So the messages are to be given by a faithful people who obedient to the promptings of the God of God's spirit and the teachings of his word proclaim this warning to the inhabitants of the earth. This message was not committed to the religious leaders of the people. They had failed to preserve their connection with God and had refused the light from heaven. Therefore, they were not of the number described by the Apostle Paul. But ye brethren are not in darkness that their day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. And so this message, the three angels' messages, is not given to the leaders, but it is given to common people, me and you, to be able to be given to the earth. And the message is fear God and give him glory. We are looking at why the three angels' messages. The book of Psalms, the division 129. The division of Psalms 119, sorry. The division of Psalms 119, and I'm looking at verses 126. Psalms 119, verses 126. Why the three angels' messages? It is time for the Lord to work for they have made void thy law. So when the, the Lord will only work and do the strange work, which is mentioned in Isaiah 28, 21, when his law has been made void. The Lord will come to destroy this world when his law has been made void. And so why the three angels' messages? The three angels' messages are given, and now we can look at it. Revelation chapter 14, the book of Revelation chapter 14, and it is verses, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Psalms 1, 19 verse 126, it says that the Lord is about to work because his law has been made void. But before the Lord destroys the earth, he has to send a message to the world that his law has been made void. And he has to tell them that the hour of judgment has come and how 
are we judged? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, it is through his law. And so he cannot judge a people who don't understand his law. He must send the three angels' messages to warn the people about the law that has been broken. And so it has to be bridged. There has to be a reconciliation that happens before he comes to judge the world. There has to be a reconciliation that has to be made. And so in the last segment, I, I'd like just to look at uh, some points in the spirit of prophecy why these three angels messages we are told that uh, here is a striking figure of the rise and growth of our nation in revelation chapter 13 we we see about uh, before revelation chapter 14 is given we have revelation chapter 13 and you understand the things that are happening in the book of revelation chapter 13 we have the first beast which doesn't have the blue color on its garment and then we have the second beast, which is rising. And then we are told that here is a striking figure of the rise and growth of our own nation. And the lamb-like horns, emblems of innocence and gentleness, well represent the character of our government as expressed in two fundamental principles, republicanism and protestantism. But uh, you find that uh, the second beast that arises speaks like the first beast and the first beast didn't have the color blue in its garment which means that it has done away with the law of god now because there are some events happening in the book of revelation chapter 13 that does away with the law of god god raises a people in revelation chapter 14 and they are standing with the lamp on Mount Zion having the name of the Father in their foreheads, which is his character, which is a transcript of his law. And now they have to announce the three angels' messages and tell the people what is happening in Revelation chapter 13 is contrary to the law of God, according to Psalms 119, 126. Prophecy represents Protestantism as having lamp-like horns, but speaking like a dragon. Already we are beginning to hear the voice of the dragon. There is a satanic force propelling the Sunday movement. Now this one, I don't have to turn on my TV to hear what is happening, but it is concealed, yet it is hidden in plain sight. Even the men who are engaged in the work are themselves blinded to the results which will follow their movement. Let not the commandment keeping people of God be silent at this time. We are looking at why the three angels messages as though we gracefully accepted the situation. There is the prospect before us of waging a continuous war at the risk of imprisonment, of losing property and even life itself to defend the law of God, which is being made void by the laws of men. That is very powerful. The law of God is being made void in Revelation chapter 13. And then God gives Revelation chapter 14 to counter what is happening in Revelation chapter 13. And who are the people who are to uh, be able to sound this message? We are told the angel represented in prophecy as delivering this message symbolizes a faithful class of men who obedience to the prompting of God's spirit and the teachings of his word proclaim his warning through to the inhabitants of the earth. And so the warnings are given by you and me who are seeing what is happening, the breach that is being made in the law of God. And so uh, the religious powers are aligning themselves. They are claiming to have the characteristics of the lamb. When you read Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 to 13, you see this lamb-like beast professing the innocent and the characteristics of the lamb, which is Jesus Christ. But when you continue reading, it speaks like a dragon, which means that it is controlled by Satan because Revelation chapter 12 says that the dragon is Satan himself. And so the time is coming when God's people will feel the hand of persecution because they keep the Holy Sabbath and they keep the commandments of God. Satan has brought about changes in this world and those 
who will be true to God will be brought in times which are of perplexing nature. This man of sin has thought to change the times and the laws and enforce his days, but the Lord has to have a church which is pure, a church which is to proclaim his word. The word of God gives us clarity that uh, there is coming a time when the law of God shall be scorned. The Protestant world proclaiming and professing to follow the Lord follows after their own commandments. And we found this in Timothy. Go with me in 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. The great crisis actually that is just on the horizon, it is about to break before us that uh, the beast, the two beasts in Revelation chapter 13 are to take over the world. But while they are trying to take over the world, the Lord is rising up a people in Revelation chapter 14 to counter the work that is going to be done. And so this Protestantism and the other people, we read this in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and not truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And so there is coming a time when uh, people will give up the law and the commandments of God and give heed to seducing spirits. And when you go back to the book of, uh, uh, when you go to the book of uh, Second Timothy chapter, Three, if I'm not wrong, it says, This know also that in the last day perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, and unthankful. You just look at verse 2, and you find that almost the whole law is made devoid. The men are lovers of themselves, the breaking up, of the fifth commandment, they are covetous. Commandment number eight, they are boasters, blasphemers. That is the breaking of commandment one and two, disobedient to parents still, unthankful and unholy. Unholy means not having holiness. And so without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, that is commandment number nine, being broken in continent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And the denying of the power of, we just read in Romans chapter one, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And so these men do not believe in the gospel and they just shall live by faith. If the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, and they just shall live by faith, then men are receiving the righteousness of Jesus Christ to be able to live in the sight of the, a holy God without a mediator. But the man of sin in Revelation chapter 13 and chapter 14, actually his work is the work of righteousness by works because for men to survive at such a time, they have to have the mark of the beast in their hands, in their minds what they think. And so what the Lord does is he reverses everything that the just shall live by faith by giving the three angels messages. The last message to be given to the world is the character of love of Jesus Christ. What God has done to us and we must have the faith of Jesus Christ, wherein we are told that the faith of Jesus Christ, 
Here are the patient of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. That is how the third angel's message ends. And when you read 12 MR, page 193, paragraph 4, it says it tells us that the faith of Jesus Christ is the belief that God can save us humbly. Him becoming the substitute, a surety for our sins so that we may get his righteousness. And so, while the people of God are standing in the righteousness of God, the people who are worshipping the beast, they are going in the ways of the man of sin, that they may do this and do that so that they may survive that period. And so the time is at hand where these things shall be accompanied with miracles with fire from heaven. But the third angel's message has to be given. And this is why we are looking at the third angel's messages, why it is given. Those who may profess to be followers of Christ, but they have lost their leader. They will not be able to survive in this period. There are people who are so worried about what is coming to happen in this world that uh, they are putting in plans for them to be able to survive this period. But the children of God, although they have to prepare, they have to prepare spiritually, but in their preparation spiritually, they have to depend on the Lord to tell them every movement that they shall be able to make. And so there is a test to come to this world a test that has to do with the seal of God and the mark of the beast, and we shall be looking minutely at these points. Our loyalty to the Lord will have to be proved. Do we honor God or do we honor the things of this world and follow after the things of this world? And so the Lord tells us this in this preparation. We are told that... Uh, when the Protestant churches shall unite with the secular power to sustain a false religion, for opposing with their ancestors endure the fiercest persecution, when the state shall use its power to enforce the decrees and sustain the institutions of the church, then will Protestant America have formed the image to the purpose, and there will be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin. There are many who have never heard the light. They are deceived by their teachers and they have not received the mark of the beast. The Lord is working with them. He has not left them to their own ways until they shall be convicted of the truth and trample upon the evidence given to enlighten them. The Lord will not withdraw his grace. And so God is to give the three angels messages and the people who are in darkness have to hear a message. But who shall go and preach this message. We are told in the book of Romans that uh, a preacher has to be sent. A preacher has to be sent to give the message uh, to these people. In the book of uh, Romans chapter 10, in the book of Romans chapter 10, let us go there. Why the three angels' messages? It was to warn the people of what is coming to happen in this world. There are people who are deceived and are in sin. And the Lord is raising up a movement, a people. They are not the religious leaders, but are people who are consecrated, who have received the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and they can go and sound the message in its clearness, not fearing persecution, not fearing anything that is to happen to them. The book of Romans chapter 10, it says, and remember, the three angels' messages is the message of justification by faith, righteousness by faith. Now, the people of the world have to receive these messages, but how do they have to receive these messages? Revelation chapter, uh, Romans chapter 10. It says, verses 11. I'll start even earlier. Verses 6, going downwards. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. 
or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. So somebody has to preach the word of faith, which is justification by faith, righteousness by faith, the third angel's message in verity to the people. Nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Twelve, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. Verses 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom whom they, shall have, they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This is a quotation from Isaiah, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation and the just shall live by faith. And so someone has to go with the third angel's message to the people. But they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Isaiah 53. So then faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. The just shall live by faith. And this message has to go to the whole world. But the messengers has to be sent, and it's you and me to give the three angels messages to prepare people to stand before the dreadful day of the Lord. And so apostasy is creeping in this whole world. The legislations are being made, and history is being repeated. As just in the previous days in the Dark Ages, when the commandments of God were made of no value, and people were persecuted, people were killed. So history is about, about to be uh, repeated. Men are about to invent their own inspired type of worship, type of their obedience, type of doing things that is contrary to the word of the Lord. And the people of God uh, has to stand in the gap. And how shall he stand in the gap? he shall raise up a people who are ready to be used. And so the few last segments looking at uh, why the three angels' messages are given. A time is coming when the law of God is in a special sense to be made void in our land. And in the whole world, the rulers of our nation will be, will by legislation enactments enforce the Sunday law and that is God's people be brought into great peril. When our nation, that is America, in its legislation council shall enact laws to bind the concerns of men in regard to their religious privileges, enforcing sound observance and bringing oppressive power to bar against those who keep the seventh day Sabbath, the law of God will, to all intents and purposes, be made void in our land and national apostasy will be followed by national ruin. The sins of the world will have reached unto heaven when the law of God is made void, when the Sabbath of the Lord is trampled in the dust, and men are compelled to accept in its stead the institution of the purpose through the strong hand of the law of the land. In exalting an institution of man above the institution of ordain, ordain of God, they show contempt for the great lawgiver and refuse his sign or his seal. My question to you, are we prepared? to be hated of all nations for the sake of the Lord. We are living in a momentous period of this earth history, if you have never knew. And uh, the great conflict is before us. We see the world corrupted under the inhabitants thereof, and the man of sin moving here and there, and the people exalting themselves 
and being disloyalty to God. And the greatest sermon that can be preached at this time is uh, a living testimony of his servants. That they have to be a testimony by their, when, when the wickedness is increasing in the world, there should be a righteousness increasing or the glory of God shining more and more upon his people. And so my challenge to you, that uh, as we see the world staggering in darkness, as we see the world standing at this point, and all the prophecies of Matthew chapter 24 and Daniel chapter 11, and the other prophecies being fulfilled, what is our position? What is our work at this time? I'd like to end by reading you something in the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel. I'm sorry, the book of uh, Jeremiah. The book of uh, Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, then we go to the book of uh, Ezekiel, God willing. The book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 3. Let us look at Jeremiah chapter 3 as we close up. Why the three angels' messages? God is speaking to you and me. And we have to arise and do something. Jeremiah chapter 3, this is what we read. Verses 2. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high place and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy wildoms and with thy wickedness. Verses 3, Therefore the showers have been withheld, holden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hadst a worse forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. And so the land is filled with wardom, the land is filled with abomination, the world is filled with every kind of darkness. And you don't have to walk outside Kenya to see what is happening. Last week we saw what happened in the schools. Children are burning schools. They want to kill their own teachers. Children have nothing. This is the generation that doesn't have any respect for anything. And Proverbs says that there shall be a generation which does not respect the, the parents. This is the generation. And then the Lord, after seeing all these things happening in the land and all this wardom that is happening, he calls for a repentance. And this repentance, after people repenting, repenting is turning from the way that you are doing which are wrong and going the other side and starting walking contrary to that which you are walking in. And so the Lord points at the darkness that is happening in the world and he calls upon his people to repent. And after the people repent, this is what the Lord is going to do. And this is what he is doing even now as I speak to you. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return thou backsliding Israel. You and me have to return saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I'll take you one of the city, 
of a city and two of a family, and I'll bring you to Zion. Amen. And so when you read Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, and lo, I looked and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion with 144,000. And after this 144,000, then the three angels' messages are given. And so the Lord is telling us, I have withheld the showers. I have withheld the latter rain. Return unto me. Then I shall pick one from a city and two from a family, and I'll bring them unto Mount Zion. Then what shall he do when he brings them to Mount Zion? Verse 15, and I'll give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither it shall come to my mind, neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil hearts. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land? A goodly heritage of the host of nations, the Jerusalem that is come from above. And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away from me. Surely, as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. I'd like to bring this to an end. There is a call of repentance so that we may be set up on Mount Zion. I won't go to Ezekiel because it will take some time. I'll go into it maybe in the next session. That uh, the Lord is calling us to repent, and he, then he will pick one from a city, two from a family, and set them on Mount Zion. And then he says that when he sets them on Mount Zion, the inhabitants of the earth shall come unto Jerusalem. And this is what we found in Isaiah chapter 60, that the world will be in gross darkness, but he's telling us, arise, the light has come, and the Gentiles shall come unto thy light. And the young one shall be nursed at thy breast. And so this is what we are looking up to. Right now, the Lord is started doing something among us, raising pastors who can be able to feed the flock. You don't want to be left behind. The reason why the three angels' messages are given is to declare the righteousness of God on the land when the law of God is made void. Will you be part of those who will make void the law of God? Or will you be amongst uh, those who shall bring in everlasting righteousness? This is a question that has to be settled in our hearts so that uh, we may not be found wanting in the balance of the sanctuary. My prayer this uh, Sabbath is that uh, we may understand the reason why the three angels' messages are given and accept to be used by the Lord to finish up the work. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us and shall we offer a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful that uh, you are raising pastors, evangelists, a people who have renounced self, a people whom the Spirit of the Lord is working in, a people who have received Jesus Christ in their lives, and they are to stand in the gap of thy law that has been made void, and be able to show unto the world that the just shall live by faith. And those who have come unto Christ, Christ says that he will not cast them away but he will make them sons of God. Sons not born by the flesh and the will of man, but sons born of water and the spirit. We don't want to be left behind in these messages. We want to walk with thee. We want to be enriched and be used to spend and expend ourselves to bring those who are in darkness into light. And so God, prepare us. As you have called us unto repentance, we come, Lord, Whatever has been weak in our lives, it may be strong. 
you say that in our weakness, the strength is made perfect. So we come back again. You said that in the first day, in the second, and the third day, you shall be able to heal us. And we shall know who follows after your name. We thank you, Lord, because you have not called us to ruin and destruction, but for everlasting life. And so thank you for speaking to us and teaching us that you will now give us the power to walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.